presentation of Fox Sports. We are Blackboard. We are Arizona. Another summer day in Chicago. We had a sudden rain cloud blow through about an hour ago. Tarpers on the field, but we're set to go right now. Game two against the Cubs. This road trip started with a Zach Godley win in St. Louis last week. Tonight, the Diamondbacks look to Godley for a second win on this trip. Join us for Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Wrigley Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. Diamondbacks tonight hoping for better luck here against the Cubs. D-backs right now, a little thin at shortstop. Nick Ahmed, Chris Owings, Cattell Marte all unavailable. We saw newly acquired Adam Rosales, Bob, last night. Tonight, it's the rookie Jack Reinheimer who gets his first major league start. Yeah, he got a pinch hit at bat in the ball game last night, but getting a started shortstop here tonight. Had a real good year down in Reno for the Aces this year. Hit 283, had four homers, 14 doubles, drove in 44 runs, and scored 70 runs in 101 games. Has had seasons as high as 39 stolen bases in the minor leagues, really testing the organizational depth at the shortstop position. Yeah, he was John Lester's 2,000th strikeout victim and his only at bat last night as a pinch hitter. He gets the start tonight. Zach Godley hoping for better luck than Patrick Corbin had last night. Well, Zach Godley, if he pitches the way he did against St. Louis last time out, he was outstanding. Seven innings of four hits, shutout baseball, punched out seven, only walked two. Opponents are only hitting 199 against Zach Godley this year. Hopefully, he'll have that ground. Round ball working again tonight. Godly matched up against the Cubs former Cy Young winner Jake Arrieta. The Diamondbacks are on north side. First pitch is next on Fox Sports Arizona. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Healer River Casinos. The card by Healer River Casinos earns you rewards 10 times faster than ever before. Sign up today at any Gila River Hotels and Casinos location. By Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. By Jack in the Box and the Jumbo Jack. A home run for your mouth. And by CenturyLink, connecting you to the power of the digital world. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by your Valley Honda dealers, where you get more standard features for less money. By Tire Pros, everything rotates around you. By Gigablast, internet from Cox, get ready for the gig life. By Oregano, step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano's, your neighborhood pizza joint, location statewide. By Phoenix Raceway, see Dale Jr.'s final West Coast race during the Can-Am 500 NASCAR semifinal at Phoenix Raceway, November 10th through the 12th. Tickets at phoenixraceway.com. And by State Farm, here to make life go right. Talk to an agent today or call 1-800-STATE-FARM. Chicago, Illinois. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. Steve Berthew, Bob Brenly, and Jody Jackson with you. The wind is blowing in. We had a rain shower pass through here during batting practice. It got dark and wet pretty quick. A little overcast right now and certainly breezy here at the ballpark. D-backs and the Cubs. Here's your Diamondbacks lineup presented by your Valley Chevy dealer. 
Uh, the Fab Five back at the top of the order. David Peralta in left field. A.J. Pollock out in center. Jake Lamb back in the lineup at third base. Paul Goldschmidt over at first. J.D. Martinez in right. David Descalso will get the start at second base again tonight with Chris Iannetta doing the catching. Jack Reinheimer getting his first start at the major league level at shortstop. And right-hander Zach Godley on the mound. Jake Arrieta is your Ram truck starter for the Cubs. Two years removed from his Cy Young season here in Chicago. The numbers this year a little more pedestrian, 10 and 7, a 4-0-3 ERA, but he's pitched very well lately. Yeah, seems to be rounding around. Uh, he's changed his arsenal a little bit. That cut slider hybrid pitch used to be one of his go-tos, especially when he had two strikes. He's had trouble commanding it this year, so you'll see a lot of sinkers, you'll see some curveballs, and you may see the occasional cutter. David Peralta in the leadoff spot again tonight, and we are underway. Game two of a three-game set. The Cubs and the Diamondbacks. There's ball one. Peralta, 301 and 10 homers. We met with Tori Lavello before the ball game today, and he was preaching patience against Jake Arietta. Wait him out a bit. Try to run up that pitch count a little bit. Arietta, as you can clearly see, uh, has a little crossfire in his delivery. Steps to the third base side of the mound and throws back against his body. Third base for Chris Bryant. No way. Let's take a look at Chicago defensively. That's brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Joe Madden loading up with left-handed hitters tonight. Jason Hayward will be out in right field. John Jay in center. Kyle Schwarber in left. It'll be Bryant and Russell on the left side of the infield with Ben Zobrist and Anthony Rizzo on the right side. Alex Avila behind the plate. And the right-hander Jake Arrieta on the mound. Avila just acquired from Detroit. This is his first game as a Cub tonight, his Chicago debut. Former teammate there of J.D. Martinez as the Tigers start clearing house A.J. Pollock A.J. single doubled scored twice last night he's hitting 303 with five home runs Diamondbacks in their clubhouse always have posted a mini scouting report on the guy they're about to face and usually there's one out pitch that's highlighted in red lettering Arietta has two Zobos the second baseman tonight and he gets Pollock with a tremendous defensive play. Ben Zobrist. Zobrist was out in right field in last night's ball game. Two down here in the first. Wow, Ben, I didn't know you had it in. You covered a lot of ground up the middle of the field that time. Gets to the ball with a dive. One hop throw over to Anthony Rizzo just in time to get A.J. Pollock. Took away a base hit that time. Sure did. Play on, no challenge from the Diamondbacks. Couple of ground ball outs started off for Jake Arrieta. Two outs on five pitches. Here's Jake Lamb, who had the night off last night. Mentioning those out pitches for Arrieta. He has two of them, technically, both that curveball and the slider. Very effective lately. There's a fastball for strike one. Lamb at 264 and 23 home runs. Jake, one of several Diamondbacks who are slumping as of late. He's stuck in a one for 21 up there in his last eight games. It was funny, we talked to Tor Lovello in his office before the ball game, and he was talking about the lack of timely hits. He likes the way the Diamondbacks have organized innings and gotten guys on base and tried to build something, but they just haven't been able to come up with that big timely hit. Same thing I heard from Joe Madden on the cup <laughs> side of the field. Now, last night notwithstanding, they just pounded the ball all over the ballpark, but uh, he was bemoaning the fact that, geez, a ground ball sometimes will score a run, and we've got guys trying to hit the ball out on the Addison or out on the Waveland Avenue. So similar emotions from both managers. Yeah, Javier Baez, who's not in the lineup tonight, seems to do that with every swing. Arietta makes short work of the Diamondbacks in a one, two, three, first. Zach Godley coming up from Wrigley Field.
scoreless in the first at Wrigley Field. Your Ram truck starter for the Diamondbacks tonight is Zach Godley, a 10th round draft pick by the Cubs out of the University of Tennessee. That was four years ago. 3 0 6 ERA coming off a win at St. Louis last Thursday. Yeah, we talked about that win at St. Louis. He gave up only four hits and in seven innings. Got 12 ground ball outs in that game, seven strikeouts, and two infield pop ups, including that tremendous Jake Lamb play when he tumbled into the stands on the third base side. Then Zobrist, the switch hitter, batting from the left side against the right hander, Godley, leads it off for the Cubs. And there's strike one. Zobrist. He's had a real down offensive year, 223, eight homers, but he walked and had a couple of singles last night, scored three runs. And he's got a base hit to open up this ball game. Let's take a look at Chicago's starting lineup put out there by their manager, Joe Madden. That's presented by your Valley Chef dealers. Ben Zobris leading it off with that base hit into right field. It'll be followed by Chris Bryant playing third base. Anthony Rizzo across the diamond at first. Kyle Schwarber getting the start in left field. Alex Avila. 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 <laughs> Alex is doing the catching for the Cubs tonight. Addison Russell at short. Jason Hayward out in right with John Jay in center field and Jake Arrieta on the mound. Well, you can uh, blame your buddy Lenny Ball game for all the uh, Avila pronunciation. He took to the Twitter just to clear it with everybody because he went down and talked to Alex. Here's Chris Bryant. Even the Tigers had said Avila. But Len went down there and talked to him and said, look, you know, I kind of gave up years ago on anybody ever getting it right. <laughs> and believe me, I know how that feels. But he said, technically, it's Avila. So that's what we're going with. All right, Alex. Double A. Want to know on Chris Bryant. Bryant drove in a couple of runs last night, one for four with a single. He scored twice. Just about everybody for the Cubs scored twice last night. 16 runs on 17 hits. Right to Reinheimer at shortstop. Descalso turns two. Jack Reinheimer, his first big league start. Highlights are Diamondback defense presented by Nationwide Vision Center. Peralta Pollock, Martinez left to right across the outfield tonight. Lamb and Reinheimer on the left side of the infield. Descalso and Paul Goldschmidt on the right side. Chris Iannetta will be doing the catching tonight. The right hand for Zach Dowd. So Zach, two outs on five pitches. The last time against the Cardinals, he had 12 ground ball outs in that game at Bush Stadium Thursday. And off to a good start here in terms of the ground balls. Anthony Rizzo homered twice last night. He backs have the shift on the overload the right hand side. There's ball one to Rizzo. Descalso the second baseman back out there in the outfield grass. The shortstop Reinheimer first base side of second. Rizzo last night homers number 25 and 26 on the year. He drove in three runs. Balls and one strike. Zach Godley outstanding at Bush Stadium Thursday. Seven scoreless innings, gave up just four hits, all singles. Twelve ground ball outs and seven strikeouts. There's a fly ball to left field. David Peralta has to run over there near the line. And Zach Godley gets through an easy first inning. No score here at Wrigley Field.
second inning. No score D-backs and Cubs. Diamondbacks fans are with us on this road trip. And Bob, before Goldie steps in, we check in with your Valley Honda dealers. Key to the game. Not how many, but when. We're talking about hits. Doesn't matter if you get double digits in hits if they don't come at the right time in the ball game. And Troy Lavello has talked to his players about that. Maybe not putting as much pressure on themselves. Just get a good pitch to hit. Put a good swing on it. And try to find some holes. Goldie 318 and 22 home runs. Had a couple of singles last night. Bryant in front of Addison Russell. Four up, four down for Arietta. And the D backs were down 2 0 after one inning. But then in the second inning, they had a chance to get right back in it. Bases loaded, one out, but couldn't get a run across. And the Cubs answered with four in the home half, and that was pretty much it. J.D. Martinez. 289, 21 home runs with both the Tigers and the Diamondbacks. Reuniting with Alex Avila, who was just traded himself from Detroit, making his Cubs debut tonight, the Cub catcher. These guys were Tigers teammates just a couple of weeks ago. That's got to be weird. JD, 0 for 3 with a walk at an RBI in last night's game. Ball just got a piece of that one. It's 0 2. Well, our key to the ball game last night was know your surroundings here at Wrigley Field. Last night, the wind early in the game was blowing from right to left. Later on, blowing straight out to left. But, uh, tonight, it's blowing straight in. This is a night to try to hit line drives. It's a lot cooler in here than it was last night. And with that big board in left field. I've heard that that particular area of the field, which is very short anyway, from the 368 mark in left center over to the well, and especially if you keep it down, hit line drives that big board and the bleachers out there in left field seem to deflect some of the wind. So that would be the direction you'd like to go. Slider there from Arianna missed, and it's the ball and two strikes on JD Martinez. Is out, tries to dunk one into center, but Russell drifts out there from the shortstop and runs it down for the second out. That'll bring up Daniel Descalso, who pitched in last night's ball game, worked a 1 2 3 eighth inning, his second major league pitching appearance ever. 243 and six home runs as a hitter. Low for three with a walk last night. Scalso drives one deep center field. John Jay is out there. He's on the track and he's got it. He got it up into that wind and it knocked it down. Bottom two all the way. No score. Really.
Well, she drove here all the way from Detroit just to see J.D. Yeah. Not Jim Deshays, of course, who's working <laughs> Cubs TV to our right, but J.D. Martinez now a Diamondback. Time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. And tell you what, Bob, Zach Godley's curveball has become a dangerous and deadly weapon. Yeah, third in the National League and swings and misses on that curveball. We know he's got a good one, that spike, knuckle curve, whatever you want to call it. He throws it hard. Looks like a fastball coming up to the plate and it just bottoms out. Well, Godley got three outs on nine pitches in the first. A double play ball and a fly ball out after Zobrist had a single to lead it off. And now the cleanup man Kyle Schwarber leads off to Chicago second. 189. It's been a disappointing offensive year for Schwarber, certainly in terms of the batting average, but he's still got 17 homers. He backs put three defenders on the right side of the infield. Jake Lamb all by himself in way between second and third. Both Reinheimer Descalso back on the outfield grass. Schwarber has got tremendous power from the left side. And he bumps it away from the ship and it's perfectly placed. Well, when you're hitting 189, you'll take it. That's just a perfect run. You wonder why guys don't do that more often against those exaggerated pull shifts. Just get it down on the ground, keep it away from the pitcher and the catcher, and there's no way they can get you at first base. Nice bump by Schwarber that time. Well, here is the first Cub at bat for Alex Avila making his Cubs debut playing his first ever game at Wrigley Field. He's never played here before. And his numbers with the Tigers this year 274 and 11 home runs. He was acquired just before Monday's trade deadline came over here along with Tigers reliever Justin Winston. So plenty of Alex Avila. Diamondbacks played the Tigers. They'll keep those three defenders on the right side. Avila, a National Leaguer for the first time ever. He can become a free agent at the end of the year. So he's a two month rental for the Cubs who were looking for a backup catcher behind Wilson Contreras. Contreras got the start behind the plate last night. Joe Madden was quick to point out here yesterday Avila is not a backup you look at what he's done you look at his numbers his history he's young enough to play a lot he's not a backup catcher per se. That one rolls away from Chris Iannetta Schwarber wandered off the bag and changed his mind as Chris was quick to get over there and collect that one. Godley, when he gets two strikes on a hitter, he just showed you that Coors Light Cold Hard Facts graphic. In two strike counts, he loves that curveball. A whole bunch of swings and misses. Threw it down that time. His first strikeout tonight, one down in the second. Buried that curveball that time. The Cubs catcher is going to go through an adjustment period just like J.D. Martinez is. You're facing pitchers that maybe you've only seen once, if at all, in your career. It's not always an easy way to go about getting hits at the major league level, but, uh, you know, it's still baseball. They still have to throw the ball over the plate. If you get strikes and swing at strikes, it doesn't matter uh, how many times you've seen an opposing pitcher. Shortstop, Addison Russell. Russell aboard three times last night. He singled, doubled, and walked. Well, that wind is really blowing in right now. Straight in from center field off the lake. Really gusting. Yeah, normally not something you look forward to at Wrigley Field, having that wind blow straight in your face off the lake, but with the heat and humidity the last couple of days, it actually feels very refreshing. As long as it stays dry. Yeah, it's nice. It was a sweat box in here last night. Nice and cool. High above courtside, in the words of the late great Johnny Most. 0 and 2 on Addison Russell. Well, 
Schwarber really dances around over there at first for a guy who can't run. <laughs> I mean he he's moving down you know more than you see Billy Hamilton do for the Reds. Tap dancing back and forth. If you know you're not going to run at least try to make your leadoff look good. He makes he does a great job of selling it. The temperatures here at uh, Wrigley Field supposed to be in the 60s on Friday. So a little cold front moving through here. Forecast for tomorrow's day game is not great. It was a nice sunny day, and then all of a sudden, about five o'clock, dark clouds blew in. We got some heavy rain for about a half hour. Also knocks that into left field. Schwarber takes the turn. He's going to stop halfway to third. Peralta did a nice job to get over there and cut that off. It's a single for Russell. Now that was a nice play by David to get over there and keep that ball from rolling all the way to the corner, even though Schwarber is not fast. He probably would have been able to score if David doesn't get to this ball. He took a big turn around second base, but when he saw Peralta come up with the ball cleanly and square up to throw back to third base, Schwarber had to hit the brakes. So the Cubs in a scoreless second have first and second. One out, and the hitter is Jason Hayward. Sat out last night's game. 257 on the year, eight home runs. Fastball <laughs> down and away, it's 1 0. Hayward having another underwhelming offensive season in Chicago. Although he did hit a big home run in the 11th inning. In their game on Saturday, that was the winning run of the Cubs game at Milwaukee. It's a big series. They're only two and a half ahead of the Brewers for the National League Central League. One in a squib foul, and it's one and one. Hayward got an eight year, $184 million free agent contract just before last season, and it has not worked out. They won a World Series, but in terms of getting your money's worth, a lot of eyebrows were raised when they gave Hayward all that money. He's not a, you know, 184 million. That's a guy who's going to hit third or fourth for you, hit 30 home runs, do something. Hayward's more of a complete, all-around type player. Nice block by Ionetta back there. He didn't go, says Jerry Davis at third. It's two balls in one strike. Yeah, of course, the curveball. Yeah. The Cubs give Jason Hayward all the credit for his little speech during the rain delay of Game Seven of the World Series there in Cleveland. Probably the most unlikely guy of all the people on this roster to stand up in the middle of the room and say what he felt needed to be said at the time. Yeah, I, I compare him a little bit to Jason Worth when Jason Worth got his big contract and. He was being paid like a middle of the order run producer when in reality he was just an all around good player a very solid complimentary player but you know, not the kind of guy you build a team around. Hayward shoots that out to left Peralta broke in now has to drift back and he's able to track it down in left field for the second out. And there was one of those low line drives to that area in left center field it almost took off on David Peralta that time. David was able to get back and track it down. So first and second, two outs for the center fielder, John Jay. Jay having a good year in Chicago. His first as a cup, 306 and two homers. John Jay and Daniel Descalso tied for the National League lead in ERA <laughs> at zero. Has Jay pitched a lot this year? Just one time, one inning, gave up a hit. Otherwise, zeros across the board. Scalso is way better than he is. He's unhittable. There's Daniel back at his uh, more routine spot, second base. Yeah, Torrey was a little leery about pitching uh, a position player last night, and when he talked to Daniel about it, Daniel said, yeah, I'll do it, and I know how to do it. I won't go out there and try to blow people away and 
risk a possible injury. He's done it before. He knows what he was supposed to do and got three quick outs. to run certain guys out there to the mound position players. Wilson Contreras jumps to mind immediately as a guy the Cubs should never send out there to the mound because he might throw 100 miles an hour and decide he wants to be a pitcher. Well Torrey I thought did a good job of explaining look it was done with a certain touch of humor which at that point is not unwelcome when it's 16 yeah. to 4 and the guys took it the right way It kind of helps you I guess just laugh it off and move on right yeah absolutely I mean that's why we did it with Mark Grace and uh, said it many times that night the Dodgers went home angry after beating the living daylights out of us and everybody in our clubhouse was having a good time laughing talking to Gracie about his form out there on the mound anything to wash the taste of a bad loss out of your mouth. Well, he liked the fact that the guys in the Diamondback dugout took it in the humor with which it was intended, which is just to, all right, let's at least get a laugh for these final three outs and get out of here and come back and get them tomorrow. Two and one on Jay, two on and two out. Yes, he went, says Jerry Davis at third. Two balls and two strikes on the Cubs center fielder. Doing a nice job of burying that breaking pitch in the dirt right out there near the front of home plate. I don't know if he went that time. Yeah, we paid professional umpire said he did. <laughs> well, <laughs> he must he must have gone then. Jake Arrieta, the pitcher, saw him hit a long home run at Chase Field last year. That was last year. Yeah, it was. It went about 440 to left center. Two and two on Jay. Swing and a miss. Zach Godley gets two strikeouts in the inning. The curveball does it both times. He strands two and keeps it scoreless. D backs fan out there looking for somebody. D backs fans, if you can't watch the game on TV, stream it live with your mobile device. Use Fox Sports Go. It's presented by your Valley Honda dealers. Download the free app and take Fox Sports Arizona and the D backs with you wherever you go. Six up, six down so far for Jake Arietta. Chris Ionetta, the catcher, leads off the third. And the highly anticipated Arietta Ionetta matchup. Chris 229 eight homers he played some third base in the ball game last night. And we looked it up once we spotted Chris Iannetta out there playing third. 
He'd actually done that to several times, not a lot, but a handful of times when he played with the Colorado Rockies. Up the middle and into center. Ionetta's single to lead off the third. First D backs hit tonight. Here comes the shortstop making his first major league start. Just his second at bat in the big leagues. It's Jack Reinheimer. Called up from Triple A Reno yesterday. Struck out in his only at bat as a pinch hitter. In the fourth inning against John Lester last night. His numbers with the aces 283 and four homers. Gave him his Hoosier speech before the ball game. You know, don't try to do anything you can't do physically. Don't challenge yourself to do things that you can't see yourself doing mentally. What you did in Reno is good enough to be successful at this level as well. It's the old stay within yourself. That's right. Measure the hoop, 10 feet, just like home. Reinheimer hits it out to left center. Kyle Schwarber. And down in the third. You get that speech your first day up. Yeah, Frank wasn't big on comforting <laughs> young players. I didn't think so. Don't mess it up kid or you'll never get back in the lineup. <laughs> yes sir Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Here's Zach Godley. Where's the bunt? Rizzo in from first Brian from third. Contrast for Jake Arietta tonight. After the Diamondbacks made John Lester work so hard last night, Lester through two innings had thrown 50 pitches. Arietta tonight through two innings, only 17. Oh, this is the tower there. And he knew that Godley was going to square around and try to bunt. So this one was right under the whiskers. It looked like Zach was pulling the bat back to either take the pitch or possibly. Take a short swing at it, try to put it in play, take advantage of the Cubs' broken up defense in the infield. And we got one under his chin that time. It's on now. Bryant halfway in from third. Here comes Rizzo from first. What's your boy's swing? It is on, like Donkey Kong. <laughs> I mean, it only makes sense. If you've got the corner infielders charging as hard as the Cubs are and Arietta coming straight in from the mound. Where are you going to bunt the ball and successfully move that runner up to second base? So yeah, pull the bat back, take a little chop at it, and hope to find a hole in that infield. Let's see what Godley does here with a ball, a two ball and one strike count. Ryan still in at third. Zach squaring. Here comes Rizzo from first. Pulls back and takes a strike. It's two and two. Now this is usually an option that's on the pitcher at the plate. You watch the defense, you see where they are, and very quickly determine whether you can get that bunt down successfully or not. And if you don't think you can, pull it back and take a shot at it. Squares up with two strikes. Rizzo crashes from first, and Godley strikes out. Second strike out tonight for Jake Arrieta. Two down in the third. Hey fans, a D-backs home run tonight means a free jumbo jack tomorrow at participating Jack in the Box locations with the purchase of a large drink. Second time through the order now. It's David Peralta. He grounded out to lead off the ball game. Chris Hyannetta, the runner at first with two outs. David is one of the bats that has gone quiet here. He had a 10 game hitting streak over the last road trip through Atlanta and Cincinnati. But since that streak ended at home against the Nationals, he has gone four for 39 up there. So it's been a bit of a dry spell. And those are Arietta's big out pitches the curveball and the slider. That was the curveball that time at 21. All 
Right to Rizzo at first. Three innings, 30 pitches for Arietta. No score at Wrigley Field. Field. Jody Jackson with you. The latest news on Diamondbacks All-Star pitcher Robbie Ray. He did return to the Valley today, but it was not unexpected. It is not a bad thing at all. He is progressing. He is under Major League Baseball's concussion protocol after taking that line drive to the head. Ray saying he felt very lucky. He did get on a bicycle yesterday. Tori Lovella said he had no ill effects from that, and he will just be checked out by doctors. Dr. Javier Cardenas at Barrow, one of the concussion experts not only in Arizona but throughout the country. But Robbie will not start on this road trip. It was speculated maybe Friday night. He hasn't done any baseball activity though, so it will take him a little bit of time to get back into the swing of things. And Friday's starter is um, has not been tabbed yet, guys, but it appears uh, Anthony Bonda could be rejoining the club. Dimebacks have not announced that yet though. And then Walker and Corbin on the weekend. Yeah, Bond is certainly a candidate to uh, Jody for that Friday start against the Giants at AT&T Park. It's a, we'll see. Could be somebody else. You don't know yet. Yeah, Daniel Descalso will be working on the appropriate rest. Yeah. That's uh, be his normal turn in the rotation. There's Jake Arrieta, the club pitcher, looks at strike three, third strikeout for Godley. Taiwan Walker starts Saturday in San Francisco. Against Matt Kane and uh, Sunday's road trip finale against the Giants, Patrick Corbin and Jeff Samarja. There's Tyron. Yeah, concerning Robbie Ray, uh, Tory said the Diamondbacks haven't determined yet whether Robbie would need a, possibly a minor league rehab start just to get him back on the bump, throwing the ball again to live hitters, or whether they would just insert him right back into the rotation. That's something that remains to be seen. Remember when Archie Bradley took the Carlos Gonzalez liner off the face in that horrifying moment? Chip Hale told us that one of the big mistakes they made that year was sending Archie right back out there and not giving him at least one minor league rehab start just to get out there on a mound again in a game against live hitters, considering what had happened. It might not be a bad idea with Robbie. But uh, Robbie was a lot luckier than Archie. It's amazing that Robbie is doing as well as he is, considering that the ball hit him right in the back of the head. Two and one on Ben Zoberst. And hopefully Robbie's back soon. He sure has uh, been doing very well. Everybody's very pleased with Robbie's progress. Big Chris Bryant on deck. Full count three and two. Now Zobrist aboard for the second time. Just what you want from your leadoff guy. 
A single and a walk. A one-out base runner now for Bryant. Just couldn't get Zobras to bite on that curveball down below the bottom of the zone. Takes the base on balls. That's what you expect from your veteran hitters. Ben Zobras not a prototypical leadoff hitter, but Joe Madden likes the way he works at bats and grinds at bats and takes his walk if he doesn't get anything to hit. To use one of Joe's favorite phrases, he has excellent organization of the strike zone. Bryant hit into a double play his first time up. And it on a button on one hop right to Jack Reinheimer at shortstop. Swing and a miss by Bryant, who still strikes out a fair amount. The godly curveball makes it 0 2. Yeah, Bryant is a pretty good low ball hitter, in my estimation. And this is one of those guys, if you can go lower than low, you might get him to chase some of those curveballs in the dirt, maybe a sinker in the dirt. Fastball that Zach threw a whole bunch last year. He's only throwing it about half as often this season, but still likes to make sure the hitters see it, especially the left hand banners. 0 and 2 on Chris Bryant. Four pitches in the game for Zach Godley. 25 of those have come from the stretch. A leadoff hit in the first, a leadoff hit in the second, and the leadoff walk here in the third, immediately putting Zach Godley into the stretch. Fly ball center field. It's up in that wind. Martinez tried to call off his center fielder there. Zobrist was almost at second base. He just does get back in time. The win carried the ball over to right center field a bit. And Pollock and Martinez almost collided. Now from our perch up here near the roof of Wrigley Field, you could see that ball slicing immediately when it left the bat. It started out almost in straightaway center field. It ended up way over in the gap in right center. A little miscommunication there, but... AJ ultimately makes the play and tries to throw behind Zobrist at first, who just does get back to the bag. That was close. It is really gusting out there. Anthony Rizzo flying out to left in his first at bat. Reinheimer, the shortstop, right behind the second base bag, back in the outfield grass, like to Scalso at second. With Jake Lamb midway between the bags at second and third. Rizzo homered twice last night. He drove in three runs and scored three times. Always when we see Anthony Rizzo, we marvel at how he gets right out over the plate. That's why he gets hit with so many pitches. He'll get in that crouch and the hands are almost right over or in the strike zone. Two balls and one strike. Rizzo is walking more this year than ever. He's striking out less often. Cutting down the strikeouts is actually where he's made the biggest strike. Hitters count here, two and one. Good time to throw that pitch there. Two balls and two strikes. A godly curveball. To be the more he throws it, the more effective it becomes. Schwarber on deck. Now Rizzo with two strikes has really been choking up. Look at the difference now with the bat handle, like Joey Votto in Cincinnati. He didn't go, Jerry Davis. 
Joe Madden was baffled at why more guys don't do this. Because for Madden, who's been a long time hitting coach, he was a hitting coach, one of these roving hitting guys in the minors for years. And he says, look, it's just about striking out less often and choking up helps you know where the end of the bat is. It's just kind of common sense. Better bat control. You can wait a little longer to recognize whether a pitch is going to be in the zone or out of the zone. Take a short, choppy swing at the ball, put it in play. That's what both managers were talking about today. Tobers takes off with the pitch, and that one is fouled off Chris Ionetta back there. Kind of lost a filling. Cutter working its way inside, fouled right over the mitt and into the mask. Take a little inventory there, checking to see if his jaw still worked properly, if all his teeth were still in place. Looks like he's okay. Holdy plays behind the runner. Zoberst at first. Two outs, three and two. Here it is. There goes Zoberst, and it's ball four outside. Second walk in the inning issued by Zach Godley. Two on and two out for Schwarber now. He singled his first time up. He bunted away from the shift. Just an absolute beauty down the third baseline. Did that leading off the second inning now with the runner in scoring position and two outs in the inning he's going to try to drive that ball into the gap or over the fence. I think that's a smart play even for a power hitter like Schwarber who can hit the ball out of the ballpark regardless of the wind conditions but if you're leading off the inning the idea is to get something jump started get on base for the guys coming up behind you in the order and if they're going to give you a bunt single might as well take it. Zoberst is at second Rizzo at first with two outs. Warber has been struggling or had been struggling so much at the plate they actually set him down to the minor leagues. That was in June he was at Triple A Iowa for a bit. Had five home runs down there came back up. Four home runs there I should say he's hit five since he's returned. It's been 19 games. And that can be a little bit of a wake up call for a young player who's had great success early in his career. You think you're going to be up here for 10 or 12 or 15 years or longer hitting home runs at will? Yeah. And then you realize, wait a minute, this is Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> it's not heaven. <laughs> oh, one. Joe Madden, the old hitting coach, has liked what he's seen. From Schwarber since he came back from Triple A. He's using the whole field more, and Joe with the swing sees more short, quick to the ball type movements rather than a big long swing. He's trying to hit home runs all the time. Godly ahead 0 2. Still see that collision in left center field at Chase Field last year with Dexter Fowler. You could just see it coming. Dexter Fowler, a veteran center fielder, is in charge of anything he thinks he can get to. And Kyle Schwarber, an inexperienced corner outfielder, thought he could get the ball as well. And boy, they came together at full speed. Remember Schwarber was drafted and came up as a catcher. But they decided they liked the bat too much to have him back there all the time taking a beating. So he's trying to learn. To play the outfield. That was a horrific injury. Broke his leg, tore up his knee. Schwarber played in only two regular season games with the Cubs last year. After that violent collision at Chase Field, it was assumed he'd be out for the entire year, but he really worked down the rehab road and was able to get back in time for the World Series. They activated him, and Schwarber went seven for 17 in the World Series against Cleveland. Yeah, that's the stuff Cubby legends are made of. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it was nice that he could be a part of that at least the very tail end of their first World Series win in over a century. Zobrist is at second Rizzo at first two outs. 0 and 2 on Kyle Schwarber. Got him. And Godley just went back to that curveball one more time. Gets the big strikeout his fourth of the ball game and strands two. Coming up next, fourth inning. A.J. Pollock, Jake Lamb, and Paul Goldschmidt for the Diamondbacks. Wrigley Field, Diamondbacks and Cubs, no score in the fourth inning. Fans, Crystal Pepsi's throwback tour is coming to Phoenix. Sugar Ray's Mark McGrath will headline a post-game street concert Friday, August 11th, after the Diamondbacks game against these Cubs. For information, check out dbacks.com slash concerts. This is the second of six games that the Diamondbacks will play against the Cubs, both home and away, in a span of just under two weeks. A.J. Pollock leads off the fourth against Jake Arrieta. First pitch swinging, skies one to center. John Jay fighting that wind. It's really blowing in, and Jay had to come away in to get that one as it blew it back toward the infield. Yeah, and Jay did not see it immediately. Real gray skies above right now. I think he lost that ball right off the bat, but just kept coming in. He knew the ball was going to get knocked down by the wind, and ultimately gets a beat on it and makes a play and the wind was blowing straight and now it's blowing a little more toward right center field Yeah, we know it's not going to carry to left unless you really step on it you might be able to sneak one out of here to right field once again if you hit a line drive variety home run really overcast and cloudy right now Jake Lamb struck out to win the first. It was a pretty quiet July for Jake. He hit 178 last month with five homers. Four of his homers came in two games. Trying to get it going again in his first start in August. This is in the air, left center field. Schwarber calls off Jay. Just shy of the warning track for the second out of the third. Five in a row set down by Jake Arrieta. And here's Goldie. Paul Goldschmidt grounded out to lead off the second inning.
Jake Arietta last pitched a week ago today beat the White Sox on the other side of town. John Lester start last night was actually moved up a day so he could attend a family funeral so that combined with the Cubs off day on Monday as Arietta working tonight on two extra days rest it's been a full week since he last pitched. Behind on Goldie 2 and 0. Cubs pitching is really rounding into form. They have been on a roll 14 and 3 since the All Star break. Pitching has been a big reason why. Cubs rotation 11 and 1 since the All Star break. It's pretty good. 17 games in the second half of the year so far. Their starters are 11 and 1 with a 2.70 ERA. Martinez would be next. And oh, by the way, their bullpen has been really good too. <laughs> Four guys down there have had closing experience. First three ball count of the game for Arietta. It's a full three and two. In a row, retired by Arietta, no score at Wrigley Field. Here at Wrigley Field, time for the unlimited baseball break brought to you by T Mobile. Diamondbacks a half game behind the Rockies for the first NL wild card spot, five games ahead of Milwaukee for the final postseason position. Rockies are at home at Coors Field against the Mets, no score bottom second. Brewers hosting St. Louis at Miller Park, and the Cardinals lead that one 2 1. We'll also keep an eye on the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are trailing at home against Cincinnati right now, 2 0. D-backs 15 behind the Dodgers NL West lead. L.A. is in Atlanta tonight. That's Brock Stewart against Julio Tehran. Alex Avila, the new Cub catcher, leads off the fourth against Zach Conley. Fired at the deadline from the Tigers. This is his Cubs debut in his first ever game at Wrigley Field. Wired at the deadline along with reliever Justin Wilson. You were talking about their bullpen with all those guys having closer experience. Wilson's another guy they just added. Shoring things up back there. I can only imagine what the two Tigers must have thought when they walked into that Cubs clubhouse. You were there today and uh, boy I couldn't believe 
you were telling me. I want to live there. <laughs> it sounds impressive. And it's all subterranean. Yeah. Like they, they can't, they can only do so much with the infrastructure of the actual ballpark. So they've, as we talked about yesterday, developed things around the park and they built the whole thing underground, right? Yeah, basically that area we've shown you outside the ballpark uh, that used to be just a vacant lot and they've turned it into a, a pavilion where people can come and watch the ball game on big screen. They had bands out there this afternoon before the game. Uh, the clubhouse is now directly under that. The old clubhouse which is underneath the bleachers behind the third base dugout is now the batting cage because the Cubs batting cage used to be where the bullpen is now out underneath the left center field bleachers. So I heard it's like a oh. it's like a expensive hotel in Vegas in there. It's like the Taj Mahal. I mean the, the lunchroom looks like uh, the food court at a mall. Whatever you want to eat, anything you want to eat, that game room with pool tables and ping pong tables and multiple big screen TVs with reclining chairs. They've got quiet areas where you can go meditate or take a nap. Yeah, the weight room looks like something an NFL team would be happy to have. It's just unbelievable. They they covered all the bases, no doubt about it. And on the other side, the visitors' clubhouse is still the size of this booth. Yeah, nails in the wall. Hang your uniform on the nail. And you have to take turns getting dressed because if everybody wanted to put their uniform on at the same time, it would just be uh, the, the world's biggest twister game. Yeah, Ruby De La Rosa put on some cologne in there and cleared out the whole room. <laughs> Let's go down downstairs to Jody. I think I, uh, I think I smelt that actually. Yeah, everybody did. <laughs> You know, it's a shock, I know, but the uh, the clubhouse for the visitors, of course, is the last thing on the expansion project here, right? But what they did do is finally put batting cages down here by the dugout. I know, what a novel idea. Because before, as you guys know, if you were pinch hitting, you just had to sort of warm up and get ready as best you could. Wow. That one almost got Zach Godley. Reinheimer was there with the shift on, and they retire Avila. Go ahead, Jody. Well, we'll keep an eye on Zach right now, but yeah, I mean, having the batting cages, a lot of the batters, Chris Iannetta, AJ Pollock said, well, it's nice that we have them now actually down here. That's that's a bonus. And before, of course, you had to walk out to the outfield where the new bullpens are. Maybe we'll get a chance to show you that a little bit later during the broadcast, but uh, the guys are isolated in an indoor bullpen. Some like it, some don't. Well, it's probably best for er everybody that we keep that group out there. <laughs> Anderson Russell. I, I saw uh, well, there's a fair ball right in front of the plate. I saw Jody that uh, Archie gave you a tour of that bullpen, didn't he? He did. He did. We uh, we waited out uh, Taiwan Walker throwing a pen and Fernando Rodney a little flat ground area, but we dodged some uh, Cubs BP to get out there, and uh, it's very isolated. As in, you know, there's no there's a window there, but there's no feel to what's actually going on. It feels like you're completely away from the stadium and so that's the biggest thing that Archie said when when they came out of there last night you just feel like oh okay here we're back in the real world now of course it's much less dangerous than being out here on the field and it is very nice and climate controlled but uh, it's it's definitely different for the that group yeah pretty big contrast than yeah. having it along the foul line yeah. here. and initially it was very quiet in those bullpens but uh, they've taken to pumping in crowd noise just so the guys that are sitting out there in the bullpen would feel like they're at least a little bit a part of what's going on outside the door. Jason Hayward is the hitter. Been an amazing renovation project. They seem to focus like they did with Fenway Park on one section or one project per year. And then you know three four five years down the road the whole thing is just completely different. And I, I have to disagree with Jody. I think the last thing to be fixed is going to be the press box. I think the visitors clubhouse might be uh, next on the list but if you've ever seen a movie like uh, Run Silent Run Deep with Clark Gable. Now that's the press box. Now that's not so bad. Plenty of room. Right. They got plenty of room. But hey, keep going. Now there's a Len and J.D. Here we are. And as you can see there's not a lot of room in here. The chairs against the wall right now. And uh, without a breeze in here this thing is like a sweat box. <laughs> it's like Papillon. <laughs> 11 straight scoreless innings on this road trip for Zach Godley. We head to the fifth. Zeros on the board.
team has been able to break through on the scoreboard. Let's take a look at this day in baseball history brought to you by Geico. We go back to the 2010 season when Pudge Rodriguez becomes the fifth catcher to collect 300 home runs while catching. Unfortunately, it came at the expense of our buddy Rodrigo Ooh. Lopez. Ooh, good thing Rodrigo's not on this trip. <laughs> Pudge Rodriguez just inducted into Cooperstown over the weekend. Jake Arrieta, who has retired 12 of the 13 batters he's faced so far, out there for the start of the fifth inning. J.D. Martinez, the hitter, the only Diamondback to reach against Arrieta so far tonight. Chris Iannetta, a single to lead off the third. Boy, for Jake Arrieta, 40 pitches through four innings, his lowest four-inning total this season. His last start, he threw 48 through four, but before that, three starts, he averaged 70 pitches through four innings. Well, Arietta was giving up more than his share of hits and home runs earlier this year, but lately he's really steered the ship back on course. He hasn't given up more than six hits in a game in 13 consecutive starts. Coming off a very good July. So we're going to miss, and it's one and two on Martinez. Yeah, just as a point of comparison, John Lester last night had 97 pitches at the same point in the ball game that Jake Arietta has 40. Lester wound up with his 2,000th career strikeout. He had nine strikeouts through four innings, but failed to get it out in the fifth and didn't get the win as Martinez strikes out. The fourth strikeout for Arietta. He's now set down seven straight. Well, and Arietta's only had one start this year with double digits and strikeouts. And I asked Jim Deshays next door doing the games for the Cubs on television and. Uh, was there a specific reason? Is it something he's trying to do? Pitch to contact early, and that's when JD told me that he felt like Arietta's slider cutter just hasn't been as consistent this year, and that has always been his strikeout pitch. Daniel Descalso flying out to win the second his first time up tonight. Well, this is kind of the way Arietta started. The last time out last Wednesday at the White Sox he took a no hitter into the fifth inning in that start. Allowed only two hits in six and two third. Marietta three and one in five starts last month as July ERA was two two five. Seven innings of one hit ball at Cincinnati July 2nd. Standing in his last start, and we could go against the White Sox on the other side of town. I mean, 13 consecutive starts without giving up more than six hits in a ball game. That's pretty good. Two seam fastball that starts inside, tails right back over the heart of the plate at 93 miles per hour. He'll throw that cutter slider hybrid pitch right out of that same delivery, and it goes the other way into a left handed hitter. That game with Descalso probably thought that was going to be the cutter and took it for a called strike. Three consecutive strikeouts for Arietta. Here's Ionetta, who has the only diamond back hit tonight, a single that let off the third. Arietta has retired all ladies face since then. Pitches for Jake Arietta, 31 for strikes. He's on just about a 10 pitch per inning pace right now. Reinheimer in his first big league start is on deck.
Arietta looking for his fourth one two three inning of the ball game. Three one to Chris Ionetta. And he walked him. Ionetta has reached twice tonight. And here's Reinheimer's second at bat. Wide out to left his first time. The starting shortstop for the Diamondbacks tonight. Just called up from Triple A Reno yesterday. Reinheimer just over 100 games with the Aces in the Coast League, hitting 283 with four homers. Pitchers duel here so far. Neither team has gotten a man to third base. And that has been the Diamondbacks' only base runner so far. Going to. Went to the 0 1 breaking ball that time. Godley, the pitcher, would be next. And this is usually where he goes with that cutter slider, working away from a right handed hitter. Got him. Six strikeouts for Jake Arietta. Five scoreless innings. in the bottom of the fifth no score in a pitching dominated game up to this point time to take a look at our State Farm winning combo minor league player and pitcher of the month for the Diamondbacks Yoel Yankee an infield outfielder with the Dominican Summer League D-backs team a 4 14 average with 10 extra base hits and 12 RBIs and only 18 ball games and John Duplantier a right hander with Visalia advanced a ball 4 and 0 with a 182 ERA you know they say you got to have some success at the minor league level before you get your chance to have it at the big league level. Scalso at second, they retire Jing on one pitch. Yeah, Duplantier is the first, or pardon me, the second pitcher in Diamondback history to get this honor three times in one season. Archie Bradley was the other. He has been really good this year. And we are told that Yuel Yan Ki is just raking in the Dominican Summer League program. Jake Arietta, the hitter. He is out of Cuba, signed with the Diamondbacks back in June, so he hasn't been around that long. Every month during the season, the Diamondbacks player development staff chooses the player and pitcher most deserving of the honor. Coaches have a lot of input. They nominate the players, so it's a good thing to keep an eye on. 
Oh, good thing to keep an eye on is Zach Godley's ground ball out. Six already in the ball game today. And 12 in his last start in St. Louis on Thursday. Godley so far has walked two, struck out four. Be a determining factor when you pull the plug on a starting pitcher. When Zach Godley is good, when he's right, he's throwing ground balls, he's getting swings and misses on that curveball. If you see him getting a lot of fly ball outs early in the ball game, it may tell you that he's getting his stuff up in the zone a little bit. Maybe it's time to get him out of there before something bad happens. But so far tonight, Zach has been down in the zone. Marietta lifts that one out to right field for J.D. Martinez. Jake Lamb was saying the other day when you play behind Godley you really see what he's been throwing and everything moves nothing is straight it's in it's out it's down everything looks the same coming into the hitter but then the pitches all move in different directions Zoburst has been a fly in the ointment here he's singled and walked tonight. That he does with his hands. I mean, you ever see anybody do anything like that? It just seems so silly. I'm sure there's a reason for it, Ben Zobers, but just the way he wiggles his hands like that, just as the pitcher is delivering the ball. I think about Joe Morgan and his chicken wing. You know, he used yeah. to get that back arm pumping against his rib cage. But never anything quite like this. Just the hands. Let's stir the cake batter. Just a timing mechanism. Every hitter has something that they use to get into a rhythm with that pitcher's wind up out there on the mound. And for Ben Zobers, this is what he's always done. You just you look at it and you think back. I mean, Zobers was a sixth round pick by the Astros back in 04, but the first time they got a look at. Have you seen this Zobers kid? We got to fix this. We got to fix it. There's no way he could hit like that. It'll never work. There go the hands right there. And Zobrist, to local guy from Eureka, Illinois. One of the big reasons he decided to sign with the Cubs a couple of years ago. He wanted to finish his career here. Center field. AJ Pollock backing up at the track, at the wall, and he's got it just shy of the Ivy. A long fly ball out. Now seven straight retired by Godley. No score.
Field, no score in the sixth inning. Fans, MLB.tv, it's every night, every device. You can watch every out of market regular season game live and get a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply, so visit MLB.tv for all the details. Zach Godley leads it off against Jake Arietta. Arietta so far has six strikeouts. He's allowed only two base runners. Chris Iannetta has singled and walked tonight. And that has been all the offense. Godley's had to work slightly harder, but he's matching Arietta through five. Zach has retired the last seven he's faced. He struck out four. Down here, 0 2. I just killed my first spider. Len warned me about the spiders. <laughs> this place is. It took all the way to the second game of the series. I, I, I had a couple last night over here. Oh, did you? It dropped into my water cup. Yeah. <laughs> I just looked down in the scorebook and. Oh, my wife would have just lost it. <laughs> Seven strikeouts for Arietta. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Jake Arietta has now struck out five of the last six Diamondbacks he's faced. Third time through the order now. It's David Peralta who's over two. Peralta lines it into center. Arietta stuck the glove up there. A one out base runner in the sixth. Well, recognize that curveball right out of the hand to Jake Arietta. Waited nicely and. Stinging line drive back up the middle of the field. Just the Diamondbacks second base hitter is AJ Pollock, who is grounded out flat outs. Are you uh, performing your vocal exercises? La 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 la. Oh, yeah. We've had a sudden change in the program. This was uh, not announced publicly, but we managed to. You know, go through some back channels and uh, check with the people who we had to check with. I know your staff was hard at work at this all day long. The seventh inning stretch tonight, starring Bob Brindley. Yeah, I've done it several times in the past, but uh, and I've done it often enough to understand the procedure. And when they call you or text you in the afternoon before the ball game and ask if you can do it, that means somebody has canceled on no, no. Oh, yeah. No, it I meant mean. they were able to get uh, rid of whatever, uh, <laughs> you know, low rent guy that was going to come in here like the guy last night. Hey, we got Brendley in here. We got to bump somebody. You know, it's like the talk show where you bump the other guest. Move for the down first the couch, guest. Yeah. yeah. And you come back another night. We ran a little long. Now, what's really going on here uh, starting <laughs> tomorrow is Lollapalooza's in town. Oh, Four I love day her. music festival. <laughs> oh, wait, not, it's not a person? No, no, no. Big down at Grant Park, four day music festival. There's 40 or 50 bands each day. It's a lot of the biggest bands in the country, a lot of the up and comers. And a lot of times during Lollapalooza week, you, you know, you get some musical stars up here. And so they obviously couldn't make it tonight. They bumped some big act to get you in there. So you got to let these, these stars, they're very touchy. You got to let them down gently. You can't tell uh, Pearl Jam or whoever they bumped to bring you in there. Well, we got Brendley here. You're going to have to. Now, Eddie Vedder has his own uniform, so whenever he True. wants to sing, he's allowed. Well, we'll uh, keep it here in between the uh, top and bottom of the seventh inning as Bob sings Take Me Out to the Ball Game here at Wrigley Field, one of the great baseball traditions of our time. Diamondbacks trying to get something going. Peralta's at first, one out. AJ had two balls and a strike on Jake Arrieta. Pollock has been one of the few hot hitters in the lineup lately. He's hitting over 340 since the All-Star break. 13 extra base hits in his last 14 games. There 
Marietta misses upstairs with a fastball and it's three and one on A.J. Pollock with Jake Lamb on deck. Marietta tonight has walked one struck out seven. Breaks from first. AJ fouls that one back. He started the runner that time on a 3 2 pitch. Yeah, neither one of these managers really likes to press a lot of buttons. They don't like to use the bunt uh, unless it's absolutely called for. Torrey will play hit and run from time to time. And Joe Madden, we know he likes that safety squeeze with runners at first and third. But other than that, both these guys just like to let their hitters swing away. But in a scoreless game where pitching has dominated, uh, you wonder if maybe they won't start pushing some buttons, try to generate some offense. Neither team has gotten a runner to third base yet. With one out in the sixth inning. Three and two to A.J. Pollock. Peralta breaks for second again. AJ hits it to shortstop. Russell backhand throw. Rizzo can't scoop it. Peralta heads for third. Now Rizzo upset with himself, but Addison Russell, as I mentioned last night, doesn't have a strong throwing arm. He really has to wind up and put everything he has into every throw. We saw him spike one in the dirt last night. Rizzo was able to make the play last night. Can't come up with it this time. Well, Peralta goes to third. Pollock aboard E6. Lamb 0 for 2. Best scoring chance of the night for either team. First and third, one out. Joy Labello has talked. Over and over about linking together at bats. Not trying to hit a home run all the time, but always try and get the big hit. Just get on base and pass it off to the next guy. And this is the way this inning has started after the godly strikeout to open things up. Building innings. Jake Lamb. Marietta through the fifth inning had faced only two over the minimum. And a single and a throwing error by the shortstop Russell half two on and one outs. Pollock takes off for second. Here's the throw from Avila. It's not in time. AJ has his 15th stolen base of the year. Peralta still at third. Now the Diamondbacks really have a threat going here. Second and third, one out. A 2-0 count on Jake Lamb. Yeah, before this inning, the Diamondbacks had not had a runner in scoring position, but now with the steal of second base by AJ Pollock and Russell just clanked that throw right there. I don't think they'd have had AJ anyway, but now the Diamondbacks have two men in scoring position for Jake Lamb. Marietta now at 70 pitches, 43 strikes. Peralta's at third, Pollock at second, and one out. That one almost went to the bricks back there. It's 3 0. 0 
Goldie on deck. Marietta has walked only one all night, but this is back to back three ball counts now. Situations where the Diamondbacks lately have more often than not failed to get the big hit. And it's in these situations, as Tori was telling us before the game today, he wants to make sure his guys stay relaxed. Everybody's trying to get the big hit. Just got to take it easy here. Three and one to land. That is a fair ball. This will score two. It caroms off the wall out there. A two-run double for Jake Lamb, and it's 2-0 Diamondbacks. Outstanding. Sometimes it's just a lousy ground ball that finds a hole that will jump start an offense. Jake Lamb on a 3-1 pitch. Hold it down that right field line just inside the foul line all the way down into the corner. That's a that two-seamer coming back toward the middle of the plate. Jake catches the top half of the baseball, but hits it hard enough to get it past Anthony Rizzo out into the right field corner. 21st double of the year for Lamb. 2-0 lead, and here's Goldie. Goldie has grounded out, struck out 0 for 2. The big Jake Arietta curveball that just got away from him that time. And that's four straight who have reached for the Diamondbacks. That's the second curveball in this inning that's gotten away from Arietta in the same location, up and into a righty, up and away from a lefty. Catches Paul Goldschmidt on the shoulder. It looked like it caught him on the ear flap. 77 mile an hour curveball. Yeah, I talk all the time about. A pitch coming up and in. Pull your head down into your shoulders and turn away from the ball. You can't do it any better than Paul Goldschmidt just did. Building innings, linking at bats. That's been a recurring theme all year. This is how it's done. A chance for J.D. Martinez to put a big crooked number up there. He has popped up and struck out 0 for 2. Fastballs in there. It's 0 1. AD five homers and 13 runs batted in in his first 10 games as a Diamondback. He's got Lamb at second, Goldie at first. One out, two runs already in. Away, two balls and one strike. Didn't bite on the Arietta slider that time. No Madden's Chicago Cubs, 14 and three since the All Star break. A season high, nine games over 500, but the Diamondbacks have taken a two nothing lead. Two and two. Third, Chris Bryant for one. Zobrist. And they turn it. 
But the Diamondbacks strike first. Jake Lamb, a two run double. Two nothing D backs. House at Wrigley Field where the D-backs lead the Cubs 2-0. Vans 2018 Diamondbacks season tickets are on sale right now and you can customize your own season ticket plan. You can put together a series plan, a weekend plan, maybe a half season or you can go all in full season ticket. You can buy or renew now online dbacks.com slash advantage 2018 Diamondbacks season tickets on sale right now. To make your own plan that fits your schedule, your work life, family life, whatever, that's a great idea. Yeah, sure. And they'll walk you through it if you want to call the office or you can do the whole thing online. Chris Bryant leads off the Chicago sixth against Zach Godley. Zach has retired seven straight and he now holds a 2 0 lead. I think if I was going to get a partial season ticket package for 2018, I would heavily backload it for games in September because I don't think next year is going to be a fun season as well. Diamondbacks right now a postseason team. Things are on the upswing. Down on the field before the game today with the front office. All the front offices here. Mike Hazen and Daniel Sade, Jared Porter, all uh, with their uh, mentor, if you will. Theo is down there holding court. There was a receiving line that formed a, <laughs> in front of the Diamondback dugout. 3 0 on Bryant. Well, Zach looking for the shutdown inning, handed a 2 0 lead here. But he faces the heart of the Cub order, Brian Rizzo Schwarber, 2 3 and 4. Bryant gets into one. Fly ball to left for Peralta. Not tonight. Yesterday that ball might have been out on Waveland Avenue, but with that wind blowing in tonight, it sounded like Bryant might have hit it out toward the end of the bat just a little bit. Yep. And broke that bat, just didn't get the carry. The fans here expect. Is blowing. Well, it's been swirling either straight in or toward right center field. Been that way for the most of the night. Rizzo has flat out walked over one. He homered here twice last night. And Godley, first pitch curveball that time. It's 0 1. Zach has walked two, struck out four. Given up only three hits, all singles. Cubs' last hit was Russell's one out single in the second inning. Yeah, partner, last night we were. 
were talking about Rizzo and Goldie and the similarities in their games and being the point man for the organization. And Joe Madden said exactly the same thing today when I was down in his office unsolicited. We were talking about timely hitting and he pointed out yeah, look at Goldie last night he had a runner in scoring position he just hit a ground ball back up the middle of the field he wasn't trying to hit one into the bleachers or out onto the street take what they give you and he said that Anthony Rizzo is the same kind of player. Rizzo hits it at J.D. Martinez in right field. Two down. Hey fans a day after every D-backs win get 50 percent off all pizzas at regular menu price using promo code D-backs 50 at PapaJohns.com. Goldie had two out RBI single in the third inning last night, scoring A.J. Pollock. That was the first D backs run. They wound up losing 16 to 4. They lead this one 2 zip. Notley looking for the 1 2 3 shutdown 6. Bases empty, two outs for Schwarber. have had the shift on for most of the Cubs left hand hitters today. Reinheimer at shortstop in the second base spot. The Scalzo back of the outfield grass. Schwarber saw this shift his first time up to lead off the second inning and laid down a beautiful bunt along the third base line. One of only three hits for the Cubs tonight against Godley. Obviously, Zach Godley's done a nice job of getting to the two strike counts against these Cubs hitter. 12 times he's gone to a two strike count. Only one of those 12 resulted in a base hit. Addison Russell's single back in the second inning. Tori Lovello is constantly marveling about how Zach Godley has done every single thing they've asked him to do since the first day of spring training. And remember, for the first month of the year, it was a start per start basis for Zach. He might not get another start. He might be in the minor leagues. You don't know. And then Shelby Miller got hurt, and Godley has taken that opportunity and won with it. Called strike three. Ten in a row retired by Zach Godley. There's your shutdown six. Two nothing Diamondbacks. Do up fourth in this inning right now he's working on a three hit shutout he has been outstanding he's retired the last 10 Cubs he's faced. What's next brought to you by CenturyLink a day game here getaway day Diamondbacks and Cubs. Zach Greinke on the mound against Jose Quintana. A 10 30. Start for Diamondback live pregame show first pitch at 11 20 in the morning back home in Arizona. And of Descalso leads off the seventh against Jake Arrieta. 
reminder fans that at the end of this half inning we will keep it here. Beautiful Wrigley Field as Bob Brenly sings take me out to the ball game. You may want to make sure all your dogs are indoors so they can't run down the street. This is so big that uh, we've gotten the OK from the producer Brad the big dog Weimer to uh, blow off the commercial break so we're literally we're uh, forfeiting money here just to see you sing. I could possibly work in a sponsor drop before I sing the song <laughs> over there. If that's what it takes. Well, you've got, let's see, uh, 41,321 fans here, all uh, anxious to see you sing. Thank goodness they've been drinking beer for the last three hours. <laughs> that old style goes down smooth. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, you must have done this about a dozen times, right? Yeah. Yeah, when I was working here in Chicago uh, a lot of times the guest didn't show up or we'd have a couple of rain delays and he'd have to go on to his event that he was uh, scheduled at that night so uh, my old partner Len Casper and I had to pinch hit many times for guests that couldn't stick around for the seventh inning. Now you usually have I've noticed you have a, a couple of things that you do when you you don't say root for the Cubbies anymore obviously yeah, just point the mic out yeah. there and let them say whatever they want to say so it's just kind of fill in the blank there. Yeah. Avila holds on to that one and that's the eighth strikeout for Arietta. And I found from experience that really it doesn't matter what you say as long as you're loud. Hey! You scream like Harry used to and it seems to strike a nerve with the fans they get up out of their seats and they're ready to sing with you. <laughs> Chris Iannetta has had a good night. He has singled and walked against Arietta. So he has had the advantage in this Iannetta Arietta matchup. You want to take the rest of this half inning off and go in the hallway and prepare yourself emotionally. <laughs> Do the me 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 la 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 la. No, and I've also found from experience that uh, the farther off key you are, the better the fans seem to like it. I mean that's backwards. No, well, I think they can all relate to it. Well, it is sort of an every man's kind of thing. Sure, sure. Probably should have had a couple of beverages before attempting to see this song. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you're focused. Another good at bat here by Chris Iannetta. Three balls and one strike. Jack Reinheimer's first big league start. He's on deck. Got the nod at shortstop tonight. 0 for 2 so far. Chris Iannetta, three plate appearances. He's reached base all three times. Two walks and a single. The only two batters that Arietta has walked tonight. Arietta twice. Reinheimer is flying out, struck out. It's funny, you go into a ball game expecting certain guys to excel offensively, and sometimes it's a guy you least expect. Chris Iannetta's had himself three really good at bats against. Arietta a hit and two walks and Ben Zobris with a hit a walk and a long fly ball to center field against Zach Godley tonight. Reinheimer looking for that first major league hit. It looks like Tori Lovello is going to end Zach Godley's night here. As Chris Herman has come out of the on deck circle. Godley keep in mind has not given up a base hit since the second inning. And he's working on a three hit shutout. He's retired the last ten batters he's faced. But it's Herman out on deck. One and one on Reinheimer. Matt Godley has turned in another gem here tonight. He has been outstanding. Two walks, five strikeouts, only three hits allowed, all singles. A 
Avila hangs on to the foul tip and it's one and two. the seal on that first major league hit. You don't want to come to the plate and look up to the scoreboard and see a bunch of zeros. Now his average is zero, on base percentage zero, slugging zero, homer zero, RBI zero, but he does have three at bats. Let me get some numbers up there. Two and two. This is tapped to shortstop Russell, slowly hit. The force on Ionetta. Now Herman heads back to the dugout. Let's see what Tory wants to do here. Looks like Zach Godley is. No, it's going to be Brandon Jury. So Godley's night will end right here. Jury will be the hitter. Bullpen is getting busy as well. Brian Dunsing who pitched in the game last night, warming up along with Koji Uehara. Drury will hit for Godley. Brandon 274, eight home runs. There's Bazio, the pitching coach. Just heard thunder, seen some lightning off in the distance over the lake. You might, uh, it might turn into Roy Hobbs and Wonder Boy with the lightning strike during your song. There's underneath the seats out there, cut off from all civilization, the new bullpens. At Wrigley Field. What do you think about uh, ending Godley's night here? He has been on a roll, ten straight set down. Well, as always, Tori Lavello is not only looking at tonight's ball game, he knows that he's going to need Zach Godley to start a lot of ball games between now and the end of the season. And if you want to have him at full effectiveness, if you can pull the plug, go to that bullpen. Godley's at 96 pitches right now. That's generally where he runs out of gas anyway. And Tori trying to keep the inning going with Drury, who's 0 for 4 in the series. Shortstop right to Russell. Well, we'll keep it right here. Hurry now, 0 for 5 on the road trip, I should say. Let's point it over to the Cubs booth as Len Casper, Jim Deshays make room for Bob Brindley. Mr. Bob Brindley. Hey! This is for my four beautiful granddaughters, Gemma, Parker, Savannah. Scarlet, they want you to sing it loud and make Harry proud. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack.
Contreras walked, had a pair of hits last night, including a two-run double. 72, he's got 16 homers. Yeah, this is a luxury that Joe Madden has with his Cubs team this season. Uh, he can play an almost all left-handed hitting lineup. He can play an almost all right-handed hitting lineup or mix and match and have a versatile bench available tonight. Three right-handed hitters and a switch hitter off the bench, and we're seeing the first switch or pinch hitter rather in the right-handed Wilson Contreras. Well, Zach Godley hands a two-nothing lead over to the Diamondback bullpen here. Contreras shows bunt for the second time. Fouls that one over. Ideally, Torrey, I'm sure, it gets through the seventh, and then he's set up for Archie Bradley in the eighth, and Fernando Rodney in the ninth. This is where he's been a little short-handed in terms of right-hand relief options. Archie Bradley in the bullpen. That's why they acquired David Hernandez on Monday from the Angels. But they like Chafin for the full inning. Hernandez is the same way, righties and lefties. And it's Bradley warming up right now. Andrews falling behind three and one. And the shortstop Addison Russell on deck. Russell has the last Cubs hit a single in the second. Hold on there Wilson. It's Rob Drake behind the plate. Oh, worse than that in this ball game. And Contreras shaking his head, walking way out of that right-handed batter's box. He's not scoring himself any points with the home plate umpire right now. Never a good idea for a catcher. No. Ball oh, strike three. Fastball catches Contreras looking, and now he's barking at Rob Drake. Yeah. What I like, you know, there about Rob Drake, a lot of umpires would have followed Wilson Contreras back toward the dugout. He just sort of stood there, let the guy blow off some steam, and that was the end of it. Uh, I mean, this pitch is right down the middle, and Contreras knows it. He's still complaining about the pitch before, I'm sure, as he moonwalks out of that batter's box with some words for Rob Drake. Yeah, and you're right, Rob Drake, uh, understandably, uh, knows that Wilson Contreras is upset. And just let him say his piece and go back to the dugout. Because the Cubs would have been in big trouble. Had Contreras gotten ejected right there, Kyle Schwarber, I would imagine, would have to go back behind the plate. Yeah. Contreras was pinch hitting for the starting catcher, and I'll be lucky. Gotta love the Drake. It's one and one now on Russell. Well, the last Diamondback starting pitcher to shut out the Cubs here at Wrigley was. Yusmero Petit back in July of 07 went six innings of shutout baseball against the Cubs. Well, that's been quite a drought. Zach Godley, boy, he has been an absolute godsend for this Diamondback rotation this year. One and two on Russell. Russell hasn't hit much at home this year as Wrigley Field batting average is below 180. Two balls and two strikes. And that's going to reach the seats and out of play. Chafin ran all the way over to the first base dugout. That ball went about, oh, 18 or 20 rows up into the bleachers on the first base side, but I like that. In Wrigley Field, everybody chase everything. When the wind is blowing like it is tonight, you never know what's going to happen on pop -ups. That happened to Gracie here more than once, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Well, 
Boy, that wind is really blowing straight in right now from center. Two and two on Russell. Madison Russell, an All Star last season at the age of 22. Homers for the Cubs last year. He knocked in 95 runs. There's the flagpole high above the scoreboard in dead center field. Wind coming in off the lake. Ideally, there'll be a big blue flag with a white L hanging from the top of that flagpole at the end of the night tonight. We've seen a lot of W's over the last year and a half. Chafin strikes out Addison Russell went to the slider and got him that time two down. Good hard slider started at the bottom of the strike zone ends up in the dirt. Addison Russell thought it was too close to take. Ball ended up in the dirt. And this is why Joey Lovello really trusts Andrew Chafin to pitch full innings right versus left. He's come on. Struck out a pair of right hand hitters and now he'll work to the lefty Jason Hayward with the bases empty and two outs. Another left hand batter is on deck to center fielder John Jan. Pitcher spot behind him. Giving Hayward anything to hit here. It's 3 0. Hayward does all right against lefties. He's just about a 260 hitter versus left hand pitching this year. One home run. Fastball is there for strike one. Cubs have not had a base runner since Anthony Rizzo's two out walk in the third inning. 12 consecutive Cubs batters retired. Full count three and two. Joe Madden's club has been rolling. A season high, nine games over 500 right now. A two and a half game lead over Milwaukee atop the NL Central. Chicago 14 and three since the last turn. Base is empty, two outs, full count on Jason Hayward. Second base to Scalso from the outfield grass. Andrew Chafman a 1, 2, 3, 7. We head to the eighth. It's 2 0 D backs.
2-0 Diamondbacks. Fans, secure your seats now for some big games coming up this month. Diamondbacks will host the Dodgers at Chase Field for two series in August, the 8th through the 10th and the 29th through the 31st. The Cubs will be in town for a weekend set coming up soon, the 11th through the 13th. And then the Astros are here for two games in the middle of this month. Get your tickets at dbacks.com. The Sausage King of Chicago, Abe Froman, with us tonight. Here at Wrigley Field, and making his Chicago Cub debut, just acquired this week from the Detroit Tigers, the left-hander Justin Wilson. These numbers with Detroit, 55 strikeouts in 40 and one-third innings. He was acquired along with Alex Avila at the trade deadline on Monday. So Avila made his Cub debut tonight. Now it's Wilson's turn. Contreras stays in the game after hitting for Avila. Takes over behind home plate. We flash back to Detroit. Back in June. Justin Wilson, David Peralta. Late in the ball game at Comerica Park, and there it goes. Opposite field for David Peralta. No doubter out there. And sure enough, the first batter Wilson faces as a Cub is Peralta. David singled and scored in the sixth. He's one for three tonight. Came in on Jake Lamb's two-run double. That's all the scoring of the ball game so far. Each team with only three hits. David has done a good job versus lefties this year. He's hitting about 270 against left-hand pitchers. That includes two home runs. One of them off Wilson, you just saw. Three balls and a strike. That's a pitch that a lot of left-handed hitters would chase against a left-handed pitcher, but David saw it right out of his hand, laid off as that ball swept off the outside corner. Good hitter's count. Challenged him with a fastball on three and one. Ooh, that one right by him in 97. Bullied him that time. Pollock on deck. Back in there with another fastball. Good at bat there by David Peralta. A walk against the lefty reliever. That brings up A.J. Pollock. Peralta aboard for the second time tonight. A.J. reached on an error by Addison Russell the last time up, stole second, and then scored on Lamb's two run double. AJ hitting 313 since he came back from the groin injury that kept him out for half of May and all of June. So he's really stepped right into things here. Singled and doubled, scored twice in last night's series open. Observed that as soon as AJ came back after a couple of games to get his feet back underneath him. Very good hitting position. Hands are back, he says. Looks balanced. Everything is really being hit to the middle of the diamond. Didn't take AJ that long to get back in the swing of things. Chops that one foul, and it's one and two.
Looks like the Rockies have like a decipher the scoreboard. Is that a 5 2 lead on the Mets? It looks like a 5 2 lead. The Rockies scored all five of their runs in the bottom of the third, and the Mets scored two in the top of the fourth. Just passed my eye test. It's a challenge from back <laughs> here. One and two on Pollock. It's up in that win. This could be interesting. Zoberst wants it. No problem there. One away. Diamondbacks a half game behind Colorado for that first National League wild card spot. Here's Jake Lamb. Let's see. There you go. Yeah. Looks a lot more clear there. <laughs> and right below that, the Dodger Braves score. That, if you do the math, is uh, tied up 3 3. And the one below that, the Miami Marlins shutting out the Nationals. That's the fourth time in the month of July the Nationals have been shut out after not being shut out all season before July 8th. Jake Lamb shoots one the other way toward the left field corner. Schwarber can't pick it up and Peralta's on the run. Here comes the freight train and he is in there. Three nothing Diamondbacks. Jake Lamb doing all the damage for the D-backs here tonight. Schwarber out there a former catcher tried to make the sliding stop and it kicked away. Against the lefty, Jake Lamb staying on a fastball away, driving it down into that left field corner. And Schwarber had some issues out there. Initially went to the backhand, went to the slide, knocks it over into foul territory. By the time he runs it down, David Peralta has circled the bases and scored all the way from first. Here's Goldie. Goldie hit by a pitch his last time up. Big night for Jake Lamb that two run double in the sixth and now another RBI double here in the eighth. Lamb now with 83 runs batted in this year. Off the shin guard I think of Contreras and moves up. See where this hits. Oh, off the glove. Yeah. Just cranked it off the glove. Might have caught the shin guard on the way by on its way over to that one deck circle on the first base side. It made a shin guard noise. Yeah, it did. So now Jake's at third, one out, one one to Goldie. Boy, if you weren't with us last night, Wilson Contreras will pick at any base at any time. He loves to showcase that throwing arm. He's made 13 errors this season, a lot of them attempting to pick guys off base. Cubs infield coming in now. Two balls and one strike. Some confusion back there. Rob Drake not saying anything. And now finally Goldie starts walking back to the dugout. I think Goldie thought that ball hit the dirt before going into the mid of Wilson Contreras. He's kind of kept his position in the batter's box. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, Rob Drake said, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to go back to the dugout. And he got the glove underneath at that time. And here comes Torres, as confused as we are. He had that look on his face. What, what just happened? But it appears that Rob Drake got the call right. I think Torrey's asking him just check with the first base umpire who had a better angle. I mean from, from where Rob Drake is uh, you couldn't see if that ball was in the dirt or in the mitt. And that is not by the way subject to review which has never really made any sense. So they give J.D. Martinez the no pitch intentional walk. He's at first now Lamb at third. Two outs and the hitter is the left hand batting Daniel Descalso. The 
Descalso 0 for 3 struck out twice against Jake Arrieta. Hitless in the series. Jake Lamb a two run double in the sixth an RBI double here in the eighth. He's at third. Three runs batted in for Lamb tonight. He's knocked in all three runs. Big boost for Jake. He had only one RBI in his previous seven games. That'll help get things kick started. Scalso takes the 2 0 fastball and it's in there. Daniel 185 against lefties this year, one home run. Cubs debut here for Justin Wilson. First and third, two outs, three and one on Descalso. A run is in. This is bounced slowly to second. Zobrist has to charge. The end of the inning, but the Diamondbacks add another run. They lead the Cubs 3 0 at Wrigley Field. Back in Chicago, they lead the Cubs 3 0 as we start the home half of the eighth inning. Fans, you can stay up to date with the Diamondbacks this season, home and on the road. Check out Fox Sports Arizona on all the social media platforms Fox Sports AZs on Facebook, on the Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, the whole thing. You'll find exclusive and unique videos, photos, interviews, game previews, analysis, and interaction you won't find anywhere else. Fox Sports Arizona. On social media, Archie Bradley on from the Diamondback bullpen. His 40th appearance of the year, an ERA right at one and a half. He'll face John Jay, the pitcher spot, and then Ben Zobrist, 8 9 and 1 in the Chicago Eight. So far, this one is following the script as far as pitching for the Diamondbacks. Zach Godley gave the D backs six strong shutout innings today. Andrew Chafin with a quick Three up, three down inning, and now Archie Bradley on here in the eighth. John Jay so far, 0 for 2. He has struck out, grounded up. The Cubs have not had a base hit since Addison Russell's one out single in the second inning. Zach Godley and Andrew Chafin have retired the last 13 Chicago hitters. Pitcher spot up next, Albert Almora Jr. in the on deck circle. He will hit for Wilson. Now 
Mora got the start last night in center field, had a two run single in the first. This was the side of one of Archie Bradley's great triumphs last year. It wasn't too long after he came back up to the minor leagues, June 3rd. He was a starter then, of course, last season. Pitched six innings here, gave up only one run on four hits and had ten strikeouts. That was, Archie said, near the end of the year, his favorite game of the 2016 season. He actually got the loss in that game. Diamondbacks were shut out 6 0, but Archie was outstanding. Just one run in six innings with ten punch outs. Threw 112 pitches in that ball game. Bradley fans everywhere. Peralta's got it. David Peralta with a nice sliding grab in left field as it sliced away off the bat of John Jay. Well, it's tough enough to make a play on a line drive hitting the right at you in the outfield, but when it's slicing, the wind is howling. That's a really tough play by David Peralta, but he manages to take a base hit away from John Jay. Archie Bradley continues to work out of the windup. Kept it somehow just under the bank of lights. Behind first base. Now Mora hits for the pitcher. Two seventy five and four homers singled and knocked in three runs last night. Archie ahead 0 and two. Scalso right to him at second, two down. And that old saying, what a difference a day makes. The Cubs last night had 16 runs on 17 hits, including five homers. Tonight, three hits, all singles, one of which was a bunt base hit by Kyle Schwarber. Their last base runner, the Cubs' last base runner, was Anthony Rizzo's two out walk in the third inning. Diamondbacks pitchers have stranded, or I should say retired, 15 consecutive Cub hitters. Zoberst is singled and walked tonight, one for two. Bryant and Rizzo. Descalso smothers it on the outfield grass. Some D back defense in the eighth inning behind Archie Bradley. We hit the ninth with a 3 0 lead.
Herbert game summary. Big night for Jake Lamb, a pair of doubles. He's knocked in all three runs. In the meantime, Diamondbacks pitchers, Zach Godley, Andrew Chafin, and Archie Bradley have retired the last 16 Cubs batters. And now we hit the ninth inning. New pitcher for the Cubs, the right-hander Koji Uohara. A 3-3-4 ERA, his 40th appearance of the year. Chris Iannetta, the number seven hitter, will lead it off. And Chris has had a real nice night tonight. A base hit against Jake Arrieta back in the third. A couple of base on balls. Really seeing the ball well. And had three very good at bats against Arietta. Backs haven't had a whole lot of base runners, but Ryan Ed has been aboard all three times. It up. Zoberst at second. It's up in that win. <laughs> Boy, guys, just keep changing direction underneath those pop-ups. You just try to keep your feet moving, stay on the balls of your feet rather than your heels, and hope somebody calls you off. <laughs> Jack Reinheimer looking for that first big league hit to start at shortstop tonight. 0 for 3. Yes, he went. Pat Holberg down there at first. Diamondbacks thin at shortstop right now. Nick Ahmed, Chris Owens both on the 60 day DL. Tell Marte on bereavement leave following the tragic death of his mother over the weekend in the Dominican Republic. And it was outstanding that a lot of the Diamondbacks front office went down there with Cattell. Derek Hall, Josh Rowich among the, the group. Graham Rossini was down there, Mike Hazen to lend their support. Get foul. Near the dugout and it's a play. That wind will take that one out of here. Gracie will tell you. <laughs> now that guy is really excited to have caught that foul ball. And he just dropped it. <laughs> yeah, just saw a flash of lightning. And every once in a while you get one that looks like out over the lake. Strikes out for the second time tonight. Two down. Chris Herman will hit in the pitcher spot. 161, eight home runs. Chris two for 25 is a pinch hitter this year. Chris grounded out in his only at bat last night. Right now stuck in a four for 53 skid. Mando Rodney warming up with the Diamondback bullpen. They'll face the heads of state of this Cubs order. Bryant Rizzo Schwarber two three and four in the Chicago ninth.
former partner I just looked up and saw John Jay and it looks like he's standing in the gap in left center field another thing about Wrigley that's a little bit odd the 400 in straightaway center field is not in straightaway center field yeah. if you drew a line straight from home plate over the rubber over second base it's going to be 25 or 30 feet left of that 400 mark so John Jay's not really shaded that far over into the gap. O'Hara two strikeouts. Bottom nine we go. Fernando Rodney coming in with a 3 nothing lead. Fernando Rodney on to close out a 3 0 Diamondback lead. Rodney has been outstanding lately, a 105 opponent batting average since May the 1st, his second best of the major leagues over that span. The Ash line call to the bullpen. Rodney with 22 saves and 27 opportunities this year. He's not given up an earned run in 25 of his last 26 appearances. And he's got his work cut out for him. Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and Kyle Schwarber, two, three, and four, do up for the Cubs. It's been five days since Fernando last pitched against the Cardinals in St. Louis. And then he gave up one hit, struck out three batters in that ball game. The Cubs have not had a base runner since Anthony Rizzo drew a two out walk against Zach Godley in the third inning. Godley, Chafin, and Bradley have retired the last 16 Chicago hitters. And so here's Rodney in the ninth with a 3 0 lead. Chris Bryant will lead it off. He has hit into a double play and twice flied out 0 for 3. First pitch hits a soft line to shallow center for A.J. Pollock. One pitch, one out for Rodney. Sound like another broken bat for Chris Bryant right there. I love that. One pitch, one out. 17 consecutive Cup hitters retire. Here's Rizzo. Rizzo walked in the third. He was the last Chicago base runner. 0 for 2. Rizzo homered here twice last night.
fastballs a strike and it's one and two. Hey partner the Mets uh, put a four spot on the board in the top of the six to take an eight five lead over the Rockies. The Dodgers have already dropped their game to the Atlanta Braves. Nice. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> he backs if they can hang on here if these scores stay the same will regain control of that first and a wild card spot by a half game over Colorado. About this for the Dodgers. They're three and three against the Braves since the Fourth of July. Seventeen and zero against everybody else. <laughs> Fernando Rodney strikes out Anthony Rizzo. Two down. That's a wicked change up. Turns it over a little bit. Gets some tailing action. But more than anything else, it's just the lack of velocity. It looks like a fastball to the hitter. Rizzo got way out front that time. Kyle Schwarber, last man standing. He had a bunt single away from the shift in the second inning. He struck out in his last two at bats, one for three. Change up and it's 0 and 2. Diamondbacks live post game show follows our ball game. Tony Jackson will have reaction from the clubhouse. The backs trying to get back to 15 over 500, even the series with the Cubs at a game apiece. Called strike three. Rodney shuts the door as Diamondbacks pitchers retire 19 straight Cubs hitters to close out a 3 nothing win. Wow, after what the Cubs did to the Diamondbacks pitching staff last night, you can't have more of a reversal than we saw here tonight. An outstanding pitch ball game by Godley, Chapin, Bradley, and Rodney. Godley retired the last 10, 